Hey, what's your name? Um, my name is Lacey. Lacey, go ahead. Um, why didn't God stop Satan from creating sin? Okay, great question. According to biblical narrative, sin's origin stems from Adam and Eve's disobedience, tempted by the serpent, often identified as Satan. But if God is all-knowing, wouldn't he have foreseen Lucifer's fall and the subsequent entrance of sin? This paradox raises profound questions about the nature of free will, divine omniscience, and the purpose of creation. Why did God, why didn't God stop Satan? Now, sometimes when people ask that question, Lacey, I ask them a question and I ask, why didn't God stop you the last time you were about to sin? Well, I know it's like free will and everything. Good. But if he knew that like all of this stuff was going to happen, mm -hmm. then why didn't he just stop it? Well, because God can bring good even from the evil that we do. And God wanted to create a universe where people had the free choice to either love or not love. And the only way he could make love a possibility was if he gave us free choice. Of course, if he gives us free choice, however, then he has to open the universe up to evil as well. So God thought it was worth it to give, to create creatures, moral creatures, who could choose whether or not to love. He didn't want a world of robots. That wouldn't be a loving universe, wouldn't be a moral universe. So he gave the ability that we have to make a choice. And that way, this could be a loving universe. Let me also say this, and this can sometimes be hard to explain, <clears throat> so I'll do my best, but <clears throat> I was out at Arizona State a couple weeks ago. A young man came up to me and he kind of asked the same question. Like, why would God allow this evil to come into the world? <clears throat> and I said, because redemption is better than innocence. Now, what does that mean? When you're in a relationship and something happens where there, a sin is committed, there's a break in the relationship. If that relationship has been redeemed, meaning that both parties apologize and pledge to do better moving forward, in most cases, that relationship is stronger than before there was a problem. Because redemption is, brings you to a higher state than innocence. In fact, this is well known in the business world. If a customer has a problem with a company and the company jumps in and goes above and beyond the call of duty to fix the problem, that customer is more loyal to that company after the problem than before because the relationship has been healed, it's been redeemed. Now, we don't do evil so we can be redeemed, but when we inevitably do evil, that redemption can bring us to a higher level of satisfaction with God. In fact, Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians 4. This is a passage where he talks about suffering. He says, Our light and momentary afflictions are achieving for us a greater weight of glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, for what is seen is temporary. We fix our eyes on what is unseen, for what is unseen is eternal. What's he saying? He's saying when you go through difficulty here, you're actually enhancing your capacity to enjoy God in the future. Because when you go through difficulty and you come out the other side of difficulty, you're a stronger person, and you've had a better relationship with God if you had the right attitude going in, that you're going to enjoy the relationship even more. It's kind of like in a, in a, a sporting analogy. If a, um, if a quarterback who's maligned doesn't, nobody likes him, but somehow he plays really well and wins the Super Bowl, he enjoys the reward more so than the third string quarterback who didn't play a down all year. Why? Because he went through all the pain, he went, all through all the, he went through all the suffering, he went through all the difficulty of winning when the third string quarterback just rode the bench the whole time, right? Being in the game and going through the pain and suffering enhanced the first string quarterback's capacity to enjoy the reward. 
And the same thing is true here on earth. When you go through difficulty and you come out the other side, you've enhanced your capacity to enjoy the reward. Does that make sense? Yes, thank All you. All right, thank you, Lacey. Why didn't God stop Satan from creating sin? At the core of this question is the concept of free will. God's intention in creating beings like humans and angels, including Satan, was to give them the ability to choose. This choice is crucial because love cannot exist without the freedom to choose it. If God had created us as beings incapable of making our own choices, we would be nothing more than robots, following a programmed path without any real connection to Him. True love must be voluntary, and that means allowing for the possibility of rejection and wrongdoing. The Bible gives us insight into this idea of free will. In asterisk asterisk Deuteronomy 30, 19 asterisk asterisk, God sets before the people the choice between life and death, blessings and curses, urging them to choose life. This demonstrates that God values our freedom to choose even when it leads to consequences. He allows Satan's rebellion and the presence of sin because he respects the freedom he gave to his creatures. Free will means that both love and evil are possible. Without the ability to choose, our love for God and each other would be meaningless. Imagine if every decision we made was controlled. There would be no value in our actions, no genuine relationships, and no moral growth. By allowing free will, God opens the possibility for true love and also the risk of evil. One of the most profound aspects of God's nature is His ability to bring good out of even the worst situations. Frank Turek touched on this by emphasizing that sometimes redemption is better than innocence. Asterisk asterisk Romans 8 28 asterisk asterisk reinforces this by stating, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Even when evil occurs, God can transform it into an opportunity for growth, transformation, and a deeper relationship with Him. God's allowance of evil and suffering is not because He delights in our pain, but because these experiences can refine our character and deepen our faith. When we go through trials and emerge stronger, our relationship with God can reach a new level of trust and reliance on His goodness. Redemption, in Christian theology, means that God takes our brokenness and sin and uses it to bring us closer to Him. The Story of the Prodigal Son in Asterisk Asterisk Luke 15, 11, 32 Asterisk Asterisk illustrates this beautifully. The son who was lost and then found experienced a depth of relationship and forgiveness that he could never have known if he had never left. His return was celebrated even more than if he had stayed home all along. This concept is what Frank Turek meant when he said that redemption can bring us to a higher state than innocence. It's not that God wants us to sin, but that when we inevitably do, He offers a way back that strengthens our bond with Him. It's important to clarify that God does not desire for us to do evil just for the sake of being redeemed. The Bible tells us in asterisk asterisk James 1, 13 asterisk asterisk that God does not tempt anyone to do evil. Instead, God's desire is to use even our worst moments to draw us closer to Him. Redemption is about God's grace, transforming our failures into an opportunity to grow spiritually and morally. The questions Lacey raised are deep and challenging, but they lead us to a greater understanding of the nature of God, free will, and the redemptive power of His love. Through the trials and struggles of life, God's ultimate goal is to build a relationship with us that is based on trust, love, and voluntary devotion. By allowing us to choose, He gives us the chance to truly experience the power of His grace, making our faith more genuine and our love for Him more real. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out the rest of our content. We have tons of videos that dive into similar debates and discussions about Christianity, morality, the Bible, and other tough questions about faith. Whether you're curious about the Bible's authority 
want to explore Christian apologetics, or just love hearing debates with skeptics, we've got something for you. Explore our channel for more answers to the big questions and gain a deeper understanding of these important topics. Don't miss out. There's so much more to discover.